our prayer for healing from COVID-19. Comfort us, O Lord, for we are like your disciples on the storm-tossed seas, unsettled by what lies ahead. We turn to you, our healer and guide, to hear our prayer and still our hearts in our time of need. Heal those who are sick with the coronavirus and protect the elderly and most vulnerable. Give strength to all who tend to our health and wisdom to researchers who work toward a cure. Open our eyes and hearts that we may look beyond our immediate needs to care for others who need help. Through the Holy Spirit, guide our leaders to make wise decisions for the welfare of all the people they serve. Grant eternal rest to those who have died from the virus, and grant us, our Lord and Savior, a prompt end to this illness through the intercession of Mary, our mother and comfort of the sick. Amen. As we begin our Easter celebration, let's take a moment to turn to one another with a word of welcome. If you have not already done so, please take a moment to silence your phones. Thank you. We appreciate that. Our presider this morning is Father Michael, assisted by Deacon Bill. Please stand as we sing our gathering hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of their Holy Spirit be with all of you. Principal intention at this liturgy today is Gus Castle, member of our parish who passed to the Lord on Easter Sunday last year, not this exact date, but on Easter Sunday uh, as a result of covid As we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, these sacred mysteries on this sacred of all days, let's just pause and call to mind the many ways in which we are in the presence of the risen Christ and his word, sacramental signs, the sacramental sign of his body, the church. Let us pause and ask the Lord to help us to celebrate these mysteries worthily. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you. Oh, 
this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one anointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Joy! 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. 
They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I heard that Victime Pascale, it took me back to my youth. And anything that will take me back to my youth, (laughs) I'm for it. (laughs) As I stand here on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning, I cannot help but recall what it was like for us last year. The church was closed. It was closed. And it truly was an empty tomb. Uh, The only ones that were here, Ted's family, preparing music for us, and the Augustinian friars. It was empty. And we were concentrating so much on you up there in that live stream. What a blessing it is to have you all here today. It looks like we're on the rebound, please God, and that this, this wicked COVID virus is coming to an end, or at least we are containing it and triumphing. And I'm particularly happy all these children are here. And I said to the parents in the back, I said, if he moves, if he squirms, if he makes noise, that's what they do. So don't be nervous. And everybody, let's just be happy that they're here and that we are here. As I'm thinking of this Easter Sunday and the beautiful proclamation and last night's beautiful liturgy and all the readings, I cannot help but think of what that first Easter Sunday morning was like. There wasn't the joy that we we experience now. The followers of Jesus Christ, the disciples of Jesus Christ, were devastated. They were devastated. They had hoped. That terrible phrase will be read this evening at the evening Mass with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Encounter Christ, the risen Christ, and they're not aware that it's the risen Christ. And he says, what are you talking about? What, what, are we, what are you discussing on the way? And they said, we were discussing those things that happened in Jerusalem. How Jesus Christ suffered and died, and we had hoped, but we no longer have hope. We had hoped that he was the one that would deliver us, but he is gone. When you think of it, for three years of the public ministry of Jesus, His followers rode rode the ever-growing tide and wave of his popularity. His preaching touched many hearts. Many followed him. The miracles dazzled, dazzled people. And then at a given time, we are told, he set his sights for Jerusalem and his destiny. He went up to Jerusalem and he marched into the jaws of death to bring about the salvation of the world. And he invited his disciples to follow him, to take up their cross and follow after him. And they all ran away. It might have ended right there if it weren't for the women. The women play such an important, powerful role in the gospel. It's so overlooked so often. Mary Magdala, the other women, went to the tomb not to see that Christ had risen, They went to the tomb for one reason and one reason only, and that was to complete the burial rites, the anointing of the body. It was the eve of the Sabbath, and they left the body of Christ there unanointed. 
And out of their love and their compassion, they went back. They went back thinking that they were going to find the broken body of their fallen hero. They looked upon the empty tomb, and they drew the logical conclusion. Somebody took the body. The body's gone. Somebody, somebody took it. Everyone who looked on that empty tomb thought the same thing, the same exact thing. They've taken the body. They've taken the body. One person, one person today, and you heard it beautifully proclaimed in the gospel, saw and believed. First Peter goes in after Magdala had warned them and told them. Peter goes in and he looks and he sees and he's puzzled. And then we're told, we're not given his name. He's the author of this gospel, this third gospel, the beloved disciple sometimes referred to as John. He went in, he saw, and he believed. He saw the same exact thing that the others saw. An empty tomb. Burial linens wrapped up and on the side. But the difference is he believed. He not only intuited, but he saw with love. John, according to this gospel, is the only male disciple of Jesus Christ who had the courage and love to stand beneath the cross on Good Friday. And beneath the cross, he truly became a believer. He saw beyond, even in spite of what I see before me, this terrible tragedy, this suffering, this seeming failure, I still believe. Later on in this gospel, attributed to this beloved disciple, you will hear him say, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him might not perish, but might have life. Because the Son came not to condemn the world. He came to save the world out of his love. The gospel for next Sunday, Thomas Thomas is not present when the Lord appears. And when they tell him, we have seen the Lord, he is alive. Thomas did not believe. A week later, Thomas was there when the Lord did appear. And the Lord said to him, take your finger, put it into my hand, and take your hand and put it into my side. And don't be unbelieving, but believe. And Thomas' profession of faith was so powerful. My Lord... And my God, my Lord and my God, he bowed down. And what did the Lord say to him? He said, Thomas, you have come to believe because you have seen. But blessed are they who have not seen and still believe. A little further on in the gospel, certainly the gospel of Matthew and the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. John, the beloved disciple, was pure of heart. He entered that empty tomb and he saw God. This day we celebrate the foundation of our faith. St. Paul said, if Jesus Christ is not risen from the dead, your faith is in vain. Everything we believe is founded on the resurrection. Everything. Jesus Christ is risen. He is alive. He's in our midst. And with the eyes of faith, with the eyes of faith, may we come to see him. That's his prayer. That's my prayer. That's our prayer. I pray it for myself. And I pray it for all of us. That we may come to look upon the empty tomb of life and see beyond with the eyes of faith and come to see the risen Lord in our midst. May we come to see him in his word. His word is a living word. It's a lamp onto our feet. It's hope for us. In a world where there's so much bad news daily, there's good news here. There's victory here. Darkness has been conquered by light, death by life. Come to recognize him in this word. Open your hearts, not just your ears. Come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread, as the first disciples did. The breaking of the bread, the earliest term, for the Eucharist. 
As Christ broke his body for us on the cross and poured out his lifeblood, so he does in this Eucharist. That is our faith. Body, blood, soul, and divinity truly present, and we are present to that timeless, eternal event, the passion, death, and glorious resurrection of Christ. And Christ is present in his body, the church. We, animated by faith, filled with his grace, with his life, the divine indwelling, we are the sign of his life with us yet. We are the hope for our world. And it begins at home. It begins at home and it spreads out from there. Let us truly be that sign of Christ's presence by genuine lives of loving service founded, founded on our faith in the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. Please stand. It's at this part of the liturgy that we, we always profess our faith, and now on Easter Sunday, having completed Lent, we are prepared to renew our baptismal commitment. That's how we enter into the faith, how we become part of the body of Christ, and so we recommit ourselves today to be a living sign of his risen presence in our midst. And so I ask all present to renew their baptismal vows. And I ask you first, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lore of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again on the third day, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now with confidence in the power of that name, the name of Jesus, we turn to our Father in heaven and we place before him our needs and the needs of all of his people. For our church and parish family, that all our ministries may proclaim the good news of the empty tomb, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations and peoples of the world, that the peace and mercy of God may reign throughout the earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and dying, the suffering and imprisoned, the addicted and despairing, that the victorious Christ may break the chains of their suffering and pain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been baptized and welcomed into our church this Easter, especially our now newly baptized Deanna, that they may walk anew in the light of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased brothers and sisters, especially Bradley O'Brien, Sr., and Thomas Garrity, and Gus Castle, that God may raise them up to the new life of his risen Son, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we place these our needs before you with complete confidence in the healing and saving power of the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen.
Let us pray together that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but especially on this day, above all others, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be made to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us 
an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Augustine, Monica, Thomas of Villanova, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we continue our prayer as Jesus himself taught us to pray. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the risen Christ be with all of you. Let us offer one another some sign of peace.
Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. But by your holy body and blood, free me from all of my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your gospel. Never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who have been called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please be seated for communion and stretch your hands forward if you are going to receive.
in union with those of you who are celebrating this Eucharist with us on this beautiful Easter morning, we now say the spiritual communion prayer. Great are you, O Lord, and worthy of all praise, for you have made us and drawn us to yourself, and our hearts are restless, longing for your presence. Though we cannot now all gather in person, still you ceaselessly call us around your table where the mystery of your life in you is offered. Even now, while we cannot receive you sacramentally, we pray that you continue to pour your love into our hearts. As many grains form one loaf and many grapes one cup, so may we all be in communion as one body in Christ. Grant that your love may stir us to love one another and sustain us in mind and heart on our journey toward you, that with Augustine and all the saints we may make our amen true. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O Lord, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bow our heads and open our hearts to God's blessing. May Almighty God bless us through today's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion defend us from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores us to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow us with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may we who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast of Easter come with Christ's help and exalt in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. And in an official note, uh, on behalf of Father Joe, our pastor, who will be returning this week, thank God, <laughs> and the entire staff, the Augustinians and the entire staff here at St. Thomas, we want to wish all of you a very happy Easter. And I take this opportunity again, as I did last night, to compliment Ted and the choir. Uh, just marvelous job. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and your singing wasn't that bad. <laughs> happy Easter, everybody. Enjoy the postlude by the Leitate Ringers.
Okay with those? 